Welcome back to PatBar LSAT Prep. In this video, we present Prep Test 76, Section 1, Questions 7 through 13. This is the second passage in the Reading Comprehension section. Once again, this is a long passage, 59 lines of text. The author introduces the subject of biotechnology patenting, notes that industries and academic researchers are for it, presents the arguments made against it by those who fear financial and legal repercussions, and then argues in opposition to those fears. Biotechnology and patent law are both dense fields. It is not uncommon for the reader to get lost in scientific or legal terminology. For most of you, your paragraph summaries will be particularly important. They will help you follow the passage and, therefore, to follow the questions. Your summaries may look something like this. The paragraph number, the purpose of the paragraph, and a few short sentences. Summarizing their points in the order presented by the author will also help if you need to go back to the passage to find an answer. If you have yet to read and digest this passage, pause this video now and resume when ready. Question 7 asks you for the best expression of the author's main point. Your summary itself answers this question. It can't be A, because that is what the author is arguing against. Same with C. The author argues against the opposition and for patents. B is likely true, according to the passage, but it's an argument the author uses in support of the main point. Same with E. Again, a fact used in support. D sums everything up, the concerns by researchers and the author's belief that those concerns are unfounded. D is the correct response. If you got this one wrong, it may be a good time to pause this video and go back over the passage and your summaries. Be sure you're hitting the points and following the author's voice. Question 8 asks for the principle to which the researchers mentioned by the author would most likely subscribe. For this question, we assume the author is accurate in relaying the opinions of those researchers, so the answer is in their voice, and the possibility of an inventor charging exorbitant fees just to conduct basic research is specifically stated as a fear of researchers. B is the correct response. Why not A? Researchers are presented as worried about conducting basic research. Market forces wouldn't apply so soon in the process. It can't be C. They're arguing for the use of those materials in their research, not against. It can't be D. Because, once again, aggressive protection can keep those materials away from researchers. Those who do basic research say in the passage that licensing fees are the issue, but they don't discuss funding at all. E2 is incorrect. Question 9 asks why university researchers agree that commercially promising biotech discoveries should be patented. This one you should spot quickly. In fact, it could be argued that this question answers itself. If, however, you want to practice with paragraph summaries, pause the video now and start again when ready. Did your summaries note that researchers in academic institutions are increasingly agreeing with intellectual property protection? If so, you quickly found the answer in the first paragraph, that their funding can depend on the patentability of their work. B is correct. Question 10 wants a statement with which the author would most likely agree. A can be eliminated immediately because it directly contradicts the author, who specifically notes that some researchers were able to withhold materials even before the shift to the market model. Patent owners can charge high fees to use their materials, but the author doesn't say that they typically do. B is incorrect. Academic researchers depend in part on funding from patentability, but too heavily? The author doesn't say that. We can eliminate D. The author also doesn't say anything about whether opposing scientists' work is somehow insufficiently innovative. E is incorrect. 
The third paragraph, however, does refer to the expense of patent litigation and states that its use is limited as a result. C is correct. Question 10 is another example of paying attention to the author's voice. If an answer assumes something not in the passage, it cannot be correct. Question 11 wants the primary reason why the author brings up the early days of biotech. This question points you directly to the line in the passage, so finding this answer should be easy. The author points out the shift to a market model to make the first of the arguments for patenting that researchers even before the shift took measures to protect their work. B is the correct response. Question 12 wants you to look at five possible things inferred by the passage and find the one to which the passage lends the strongest support. It cannot be A because the passage only notes that patenting and commercial opportunities are under more scrutiny by policymakers, it doesn't suggest how likely they are to favor them. B cannot be correct, because the author specifically argues against the idea that patent holders are threatened by basic research. The author never suggests that any researchers either for or against patenting are somehow unable to get funding. C is incorrect. Another option that is simply not in the passage is E. The only mention of biotech researchers in academic institutions refers to an opinion given by those already there. E is incorrect. So why is D the proper response? The author specifically mentions patent litigation, the controls in place before the market shift, and the often expensive transfer and licensing agreements. Question 13 asks you to determine the most likely prediction the author would make in the hypothetical situation posed by the question. Let's eliminate two of them right away. The passage suggests nothing about a university prohibiting research for any reason. C is incorrect. E is certainly possible, but whether a corporation funding research is probable is simply not suggested by the passage. Let's go back up to A. Remember that the hypothetical situation involves basic, non-commercial research. Since the author argues in paragraph 3 that judges tend to respect this type of research in deciding patent cases, this makes no sense as a prediction by the author. Same with B. Since the author argues against the likelihood of a successful lawsuit, this prediction too makes no sense. D is directly supported by the same argument with which we eliminated A and B, that a judge is unlikely to hold the researcher liable within the parameters of the hypothetical. D is correct. In our next video, we will present the third passage in the reading comprehension section of PrepTest 76, followed by questions 14 through 19.